Hey everyone, uh, thanks for the opportunity to present to you today a very important topic really fast. This is a lightning talk, 10 minutes. We want to go hit the key points and then get right on to things. So my name is Andrew Block. I'm a distinguished architect with Red Hat. My co-presenter couldn't be here, Shubik Bose. He is obviously very much you know, in spirit, as they say, with us here in the room as well as virtually. So uh, any questions that you have in virtually, please go ahead and you know, put it into the questionnaire chat so that you know, he might be able to answer too. So a very important topic in GitOps is security. Why is security important? Because traditional models of GitOps or just traditional models of managing infrastructure is typically managed via people. And for that standpoint, you, want to, you typically focus on physical security. You want to keep people out of buildings, out of systems. When you move over towards a GitOps model, you have to shift your thinking to where it's more autonomous and changes just occur through the systems. And there's a lot of things that you need to think about that you might not have thought about before. Everything from, and we're going to talk about those, all these different principles. Everything from physical security to securing your GitOps engine to repository security, things that you just had not thought about before, you now need to think about it. So, First of all, we're not talking about anything new. These principles around security are things that you probably should be taking advantage of automatically in your current day, whether you're using GitOps or not. Everything from understanding where source, the source of truth for your content, making sure if you're using a GitOps engine you know, that's in a container, you're making sure you're getting container images from certified locations. You're going ahead and scanning for vulnerabilities inside these containers. You want to make sure that you enforce regulatory compliance you also want to be able to monitor your systems so that things don't go bump in the night. Things that you should have already been doing, we want to make sure we continue to do them in a GitOps world. First, let's go ahead and let's start with, we want to secure the GitOps engine. This is going to be an Argo CD, a Flux. If you're not even using containers and Kubernetes, you can have an automation tool like Ansible or Terraform. We want to make sure that you secure your GitOps engine. You want to make sure that you have proper authentication and authorization on them so only certain individuals can access your GitOps engine. You want to make sure that you regulate the source of content. Where, you, where, you, where is your source of content for your Git repositories? Are you you're pulling from just some random repository on GitHub or are you going from a certified source? You also want to make sure that if you have multi-tenants in your GitOps environment, so in a Kubernetes environment, it's multi-tenant by default, you can have multiple GitOps engines in a single cluster, making sure that you limit the amount of access that you give your GitOps engine. Or if you happen to be leveraging a single GitOps engine, you can have multiple teams inside that GitOps engine, ensuring that they, they are going ahead and limiting the types of access that each one is given. That's according to GitOps engine. Next is, with GitOps, you're going to typically go ahead and leverage a repository of some sort, a GitOps repository that's on a server. It could be hosted on a public SaaS solution like GitHub, GitLab, but you most likely in an enterprise organization is going to be leveraging one that's internal. You want to go ahead and embrace common best practices for managing infrastructure. You want to make sure it's highly available. You want to make sure it's monitoring and alerting so if things go bump in the night, you won't go ahead and be surprised about it. And very important, make backups. Make backups really regularly. Uh, access control, making sure that nobody has access to these infrastructures that shouldn't. And if you are leveraging Git, make sure to only enable the protocols you're going to leverage. If you're going to use HTTP, you're going to use SSH, disable the ones you aren't going to use because they could involve some backdoors or some vulnerabilities. Next, we'll go into securing the GitOps repository, making sure that only ind certain individuals have access to your GitOps repository. So if you have a CI CD system, you will make sure that you have separate access controls for that system or your GitOps tools or any individual. You want to make sure you limit the amount of access that is given to those tools. And then inside the repository itself, enforcing branch protection. Since your Git is your source of truth for your entire infrastructure, you don't want to have some individual accidentally push to master when they wanted to potentially go to you know, a non-prod environment because that could then get rolled out and infect your entire system. You want to utilize a, a typical contribution workflow like, like the fork and pull model from GitHub or something along those lines. And then finally, perform content ver verification of anything you are introducing into your environment. We're going to talk about that uh, in a future slide. 
restrict the GitOps engine, restrict exactly what the tool can do. In a Kubernetes environment, if you're going ahead and just managing certain components in a certain namespace, don't give it entire cluster admin access because someone could accidentally push changes that affect the entire cluster. Make sure you lock things down. Utilize a non-user account, a dedicated service account for your GitOps engine. As well as, as I mentioned, employ least least, uh, the least policy of least principle. Probably pardon me about that. Ensuring that only it has access to what it needs to do. And make sure that you are able to audit the amount of permissions that you are given to your GitOps engine. Finally, secure your GitOps content. The content is the brains behind your entire operations. If you give it bad configuration, it's going to spit out bad configuration. So if you, in a Kubernetes environment, give it bad YAML, well, if you had good YAML when you first started and you gave it bad YAML, that's going to be downtime, potentially, depending on how you have your rolling updates, et cetera, in the Kubernetes environment. But make sure you enforce good content in your GitOps environment. So utilize code linting, schema validation. So in Kubernetes, you can validate different schemas. So if your deployment has a field that it doesn't recognize, it'll fail validation. Integrate these type of processes into your typical GitOps workflow, your CI/CD process, as well as leveraging policy enforcement engines like OPA, Kyverno. You can go ahead and enforce state and compliance before you even get anywhere near to merging to master or your target branch for your individual deployment. And finally, the last thing, which is a bane of everyone's existence, is how the heck am I going to manage my secrets? Every environment's going to have sensitive data. How do I manage that in a GitOps world? Well, number one, Never store, ever store secrets in plain text. Plain and simple. We're not plain and simple. Um, number two, no, Kubernetes, Kubernetes secrets themselves are not encrypted. If you didn't know that, that's a big, big thing. It's Base64 encoded. Anyone with any tool on their, on their laptop will probably be able to go ahead and decode that. Utilize an encryption strategy if you're going to store content inside your Git repository, or just don't even store it inside Git. Use a secrets management tool like a HashiCorp Vault, a CyberArk, you know, CyberArk, et cetera, or you know, you know, AWS or uh, Azure, depending on what cloud provider you're using. Utilize secret storage there, and then reference that inside your applications. Certain plugins are available to help with your GitOps tool, like Argo CD can integrate with, with Vault, and Flux has similar tools as well. And then, a lot, and then once again, utilize code scanning tools to be able to be detected and notified if it detects any type of content that might be uh, a password or, or anything along those lines. And finally, the last thing is security is always continuous. What may be good today isn't going to be good tomorrow. Make sure you go ahead and design appropriately. Implement it when you are beginning. Always start with security first. Don't go ahead and bolt it on after the covers because at that point, you're already too late in your process. You're going to have to go ahead and rework a lot of things. Make sure you enforce it and then monitor and then adapt accordingly. Be able to refer to it, adapt, and be very agile. These are a lot of different things and a lot of different topics that I went through in this quick lightning talk. I hope that I was able to provide some thoughts, some insights in how you can enforce proper security inside your GitOps workflow. I will be around the entire conference. Feel free to go ahead and come up to me. Also, for those of you in the virtual audience, uh, feel free to hit me up on my social media accounts, you know, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. Happy to go ahead and have a conversation there. Thank you for the time today. Thank you.